All right, everyone, I had to go ahead and stop our pre-conversation and hit record because already my guest today, the beautiful Astrid Zayas, started sharing her words of wisdom and she has so much, which is why I wanted her on this episode of the Success Codes podcast. So let me back up really quick. But Astrid is a phenomenal personal stylist. She's an artist and a speaker, and she's a wealth of knowledge. So welcome, Astrid, to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I have known you. We've seen each other here and there over the past year or so. But I actually have no idea what your story is, what your background is, how you got into this. And I know you're super creative. So I would love for you to kind of kick off about um, your journey as an entrepreneur and how you became this stylist slash artist. <laughs> and it has been, you know what, life is a process and it has been a long journey. And I think the journey as entrepreneurs, because what's happening inside also manifests and happens outside and it's been about believing yourself, trusting and valuing yourself as an entrepreneur. And for me, it has been a journey that I started, I think maybe in 2010, when I got let go from the company that, that I was with. I did many years of pharmaceuticals, which I used my image to influence sales, of course. I mean, we always send messages, regardless, unconsciously, usually it's unconsciously. So I I. I was let go and I didn't I didn't want to go back to pharmaceuticals. I was like, I took a sabbatical back then in 2010 that was unheard of. And I took one year and I had this huge brag book in pharmaceuticals and it was so hard to go back. And it's because my insight was telling me, no, you can't go back there because you get sick. I believe, I mean, the body tells you a lot of things that are happening. In, I mean, the body refer, reflects what is happening in the inside. So, but the, that's the only thing that I knew pharmaceuticals. My dad had been in pharmaceuticals. It was kind of like a mandate. So I took two years and then it's like, I didn't want to go back to pharmaceuticals. All I knew. So I applied again and I ended up in pharmaceuticals, but then I lasted six months. I cried. I was not happy. I'm like, this is not for me, but I'm telling you this because it has been a process for me to believe in myself. I read many different books, the passion test. And what is my passion? What is it that, you know, it's like all these different things that I was, but I couldn't find an answer. And I, I mean, it, it's working on myself, understanding myself. I do, I've been doing psychoanalysis. I, I study astrology and uh, to understand myself, my energies that I was born with. And that has led me to understand, like you said, I'm an artist and everything that I do, being styling somebody, helping somebody in their closet or, or, or teaching a class about crochet, it's all related. And I did, it's about educating, which I did in pharmaceuticals, educating the doctors, which I did prior to that. Educating, I mean, it's like giving to others in ways that educate, healing, because it's healing inspiring and also delight inspiring and delight because I do I make everything fun so that's the link between Astrid the image consultant Astrid the stylist Astrid the the creator of crochet embroidery macrame because you know what it's like and to put all that together it has been a process for me to understand it and I remember working for somebody in marketing and she's like you know what when I look at you in social media, online, I cannot understand what is it that you do. <laughs> and then I remember talking with somebody, she's like, no, you have to focus on one. And I'm like, but you know what? As a creative, I get bored if I just focus on one. And as a consultant working with women, I, it's like, I understand that too. I cannot treat one client the same way. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you, Melinda, you know what? You had this type of body. You dress like this. No, it doesn't work like that because I'm not having any consideration where you come from, what you like, what you hair when you were growing up. I see that you're wearing a nice, beautiful green color. And it reminds me, I have a client that she heard her mother told her that she looked horrible in green. And you know what? She looks spectacular in green. Now she has something in green, but it has taken her many years to embrace the color. Mm -hmm. green 
Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, you just unpacked so much that I love. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I believe that the direction that the successful entrepreneurs are going is that we're approaching things from, I have the chills now, as I say this, more of a holistic mindset, right? And um, when you and I saw each other, what, a month or so ago at an event, you were um, sharing it was kind of, it was just a truly an off the cuff conversation about color and people. And why did you choose the color that you were wearing today? And, and I was wearing a black dress, just really simple. I chose it because it had pockets and I could wear it all day and just kind of just go through my day. And I was like, damn, she's so right on. Like why? So it is, it's so true. Like there's these layers, right. Of um, whether it's mindset or uh, beliefs They're myth, yeah, myth, that go myth. into this and you are helping people uncover that as they learn how to present themselves and be themselves so it's very yeah, cool and it's very yeah. fascinating which is why I was like I have to have her on the podcast <laughs> because you know often you know I talk about autopilot a lot and we get mm -hmm. dressed on autopilot. I consider myself a uniform wearer. You know, I wear a, a top and a skirt. You've probably noticed. So, and why is that? You know, it's just very fascinating when you start to dive in. So, yeah. So how did you finally like take the leap to start your business then? Because that is such a, a drastic, you know, change from being in pharmaceuticals to owning your, your gift. You say that, it, I mean, it might sound drastic, but actually it's no, it's teaching. I'm teaching, I'm doing the same. I, in pharmaceuticals, what I love is to teach the doctors about my medications. The thing is that I had a change. I mm -hmm. change and everything else changed. So, so I, the leap, again, it has been a process for, of believing myself and valuing and my, valuing what I do as well. And seeing that it's valuable to others that people want to hear about, about what you're saying. I, but I mean, what you're saying about the the wearing green and black, and you know what I like sometimes black we used to hide it, and and it's also what I love is the subtle meanings and the deeper meanings behind the things that we wear, because I've seen it. It's all the time. I mean, I have worked at stores as a personal stylist. I used to work at Anthropology, and that was like a huge for me, like a huge school. I learned so much about women not wanting to look at themselves in the mirror, which was extremely sad. Women, I mean, it's just like helping them, helping them see something about themselves that they haven't seen. Because like you're saying, actually, I, I, I was going to do a, a video on, do you dress in autopilot? Because we do. You know, what is like a question, how come we know, we know, including myself, so little about something that we do every day, which is wearing clothes. Mm -hmm. Do you look at yourself in the mirror? What do you tell yourself? Do you hide? You don't look at yourself in the mirror. Do you, I mean, it's, there's so many things that very intimate looking in the closet and I'm very considerate diplomatic you know what I have a lot of Pisces in, I mean, you say you wanted to talk about astrology I have I a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of Pisces in my chart but I also have Scorpio that's why it's like for me and understanding this I mean that that's that's like what you mentioned the drastic understanding all of those parts of me and how I put that together it has been a long process mm, yeah and so like, yeah. go ahead sorry no, no, that's why the link for me is to give to others in ways that educate, that's in my shard, healing, heal, mm -hmm. inspire, and delight, all of that. And you know what it's like, I was talking with somebody about mission, we changing, I'm like, how can I write a mission if in a year I'm going to be different? It's like, I don't know, it's like mission, vision, what's the difference? I don't understand it. And and, and it's, and you know what, maybe in 80 years, I'm not going to want to educate anymore. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. yeah. Just evolving, evolving with your brand, evolving with what you're doing. And that's why, yeah, I get really tired of the whole niche narrative. So <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're, you're helping people just be themselves and you're evolving as you go. And especially with you, because you are, you know, doing new classes and in incorporating different things into your business and how you help people. So you're always, I see you as someone who's always evolving and growing <laughs> And I think that's like really cool. And then you share it with everyone else. So 
Yeah. And then when you, you blew my mind when we were talking about astrology, because I had <laughs> just had the little astrology bug bite in like the end of July. So it was like this totally strange timing that you and I ended up talking about it. And you asked me what my moon was. And I was like, oh, no, I haven't gone that far yet. <laughs> so my moon is Virgo. And when I like did the little, little study, it was, you know, overthinking. I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm an overthinker, dresser. <laughs> like overthinker dresser. Like, <laughs> so it completely related. So share a little bit about that because even if someone isn't into astrology that is listening or watching to that, it might pique their interest. Like it did mine. It was a very fascinating conversation. It to me is fascinating, fascinating. And and I use it if somebody likes to tell me their birthday time and the place that they were born, I can pull out their chart and see, especially, I mean, the most important things are the ascendant, the rising sign when you were born, your moon, because it's your emotions. Like, for example, if I'm fighting with you and you have a moon in Virgo, it's like how to talk with you because you have a moon in Virgo. Probably your moon is opposite to everything that I have in Pisces, which is the act, the acts of the moon, I mean, of Virgo and Pisces. So I started studying in 2016 with Judy Weiselman. She's also the psych my psychoanalyst. And she teaches an astrology that's very psychoanalytical. So for us to learn about ourselves, about the energies that we were born. And it's fascinating. It's fascinating seeing it in people, in their closets. It's, it's in the closet, it shows. But it's not only, I mean, there's so many, it's very complex and there's so many aspects because your moon is probably talking with other planets. It's probably in a specific house that's, that has a meaning. But basic, basic, the most important, and when you ask people, it's like the sun, which is when the, 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 that we were born. Everybody knows their, the sun. Yep, Aries, the moon, yeah. yeah, the moon and then the rising sign. Sad. And, and uh, yes, I mean, if you have a lot of water, then you might get overwhelmed. If you have a lot of fire, it's good to know. I mean, even it's like for your, if you have, if you have a lot of fire, so, but it, you know what it's like, it's even if you have kids, it's important so you can help them transitioning this world and what is happening. I, I mean, I have friends that they have taken the class with me and I see how, especially one friend, how she has. I mean, how she has, she helps her kids mm -hmm. knowing the energies that they were, they're born with and what to, what to say, what not to say, how to talk with somebody, especially where the moon is at and what, how is the moon is talking with all the planets. But yeah, yeah it's fascinating. It's something that I never stop studying. I always continue studying. I mean, like everything else as an entrepreneur, I think it's like sometimes I, I question, I mean, I, I have never been in a plateau, never in my life. Because I'm always curious and learning. And as an entrepreneur, I question how can that business went out of business? How, like in 2020, I see, it was so sad to see so many business in bankrupt. And, and, it's in, in, and you know what it's like? I always say what's happening inside is always happening outside. Whatever problems you have in your business is the same problems that you have in your relationship, in your personal, it's the same, it's the same. And I question, it's like, I mean, if you're continuously growing and evolving and changing and learning about yourself and bringing that into your business then there is I mean there are rewards for that and then there is I mean the chances for you to I mean your podcast is called success what the success uh, success means I mean to me yes about money and all that but then he said what type of work are you doing with yourself I mean how are you growing mm -hmm. and what kind of resources and tools you have to deal with what is going on in life, in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you nailed it. Success is a very wide um, word in terms of meaning and interpretation. And everyone does have a different interpretation. And to your point exactly, like success to myself and to my husband, Ryan, is that we are always learning. We take everything that could be considered a failure and we keep going mm -hmm. and we learn from it. And that's to us being successful. But yeah, some people quantify it in terms of money and I like money too so if they want to do that that's okay so <laughs> but, it will come, but you do the money comes you know what in pharmaceuticals when I loved it I didn't even see I mean I didn't even pay attention to my paycheck I was like doing what I love creating I needed to be creative the day that I didn't like it anymore 
Yeah. <laughs> and it just, yeah, the a whole energy goes, whoop. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I feel that way too about different, you know, um, aspects of business too, right? Whether it's content creation or different groups or, you know, just different things. Like if you're not in love with it anymore, if you're not feeling it, you know, it's definitely t- take a moment to think about it and make a decision from there. So yeah, that's okay. so amazing. So I also want you to share with the audience because I think you are so amazing. I've said this two million times in your videos. And if you're not following Astrid already, please do. She's on Instagram, LinkedIn. Are you on Facebook too? I know I follow you on Instagram and, and LinkedIn. I am. I am on Facebook under Estilo Imago, I think. And so yeah, her, I'm her, interested. yeah. And if anyone's out there like let's say not doing video or nervous or you're at fear, like you need to watch Astra because she like fucking nails it. <laughs> and it has been a process fire. for that too. And you know what, Melinda, it has been a process for that too. And all of a sudden I like, I, no, it <laughs> a process. I did, I had done Toastmasters for many years. I did improv. I had done improv also. You know what? It, it's, it's a process. Be gentle. Yeah. Yeah. How long would you say it took you to felt like you felt really comfortable? Not that I love to think about time, but it is something I think that makes people at least get grounded to that. It sometimes doesn't happen overnight. You know, I know my journey was not overnight. So if you could share just a little bit more context, because I definitely want people to follow you and, and um... how long I started. Actually, you know what I started? In? I remember going to my first meeting in Toastmasters and they had this session, which I hated it table topics which teaches to to speak i mean right now i'm using it's like improv like yeah like speaking on your feet like uh impromptu they call it i forgot the name and i did so bad and you know what i'm so judgmental with i used to be very judgmental with myself and i'm like never ever it took me i think like four years to in 2015, I said, you know what? This is stopping me. I need to do something about it. And I attended Toastmasters in 2015. And I think it's, it's, uh, why, how long did it take me? I don't know what to say. How long did it take me to, I mean, it's sometimes I feel like, oh, nothing is coming out. Like I'm, and you know what it has to do with the perfect, it has to do with my perfectionism. And when I looked at it and then I let it go. And when I looked at the video, I'm like, this is good. This is good. What I was talking about. Yeah, totally. When, what's your what's your moon? Is, are you a Virgo too? Pisces. Okay, you're a Pisces. Got it. I have to study and just learn because I'm. I have to... the sun, <laughs> moon. I have a lot of Pisces. I have the Sun, the Moon, Venus, Mercury, and Pisces. Wow! Oh my goodness. A lot of water. A lot of water. So you know what? Understanding that, I get overwhelmed easily with information. Mm-hmm. I I mean you were talking about very analytical and I am very analytical as well because my mind has all of this information and I analyze. I mean that's why I do psychoanalysis. It, it's it's I need to understand. I need to understand what's going on with me and 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 why is it that I see how I can sabotage, how I can how I can stop myself, how I can stop the money coming to me. And I want to know why, because I don't want, you know what, the things that I think is like. My goal in this life, I don't want to leave anything on the table. Mm-hmm. I want to do what I came to do. And I um, I understand what I said. I understand to give to others in ways that educate, heal, inspire, and delight. I mean, when I, I that resonates with me. And I, I'm here, I mean, having all those planets in Pisces mean that I'm here to do service. Mm-hmm. And it's what I try to send little by little because nowadays i mean the reels is what like 30 seconds and you and that's another thing you were talking about the process of talking doing a video i mean yeah. it's very hard because you have to do everything like in 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> in 30 seconds and it's like how can i give this information and you know what it, it it's might be easy hard it depends it depends but it's practice and 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 just do it, just do it. it. It's, I don't know how long it took me. And it's, I'm telling you still, I get like, oh, sometimes I don't feel like doing anything. I mean, yeah. doing a bit. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you shared exactly as you shared because that's what I think is people think, oh, this is just gonna happen in a month. And honestly, it's 
a whole journey. And, and I feel the same. Like mm. people make comments. I'm like, you know, there's days I'm like, oh, I'm not going near that camera. No way. <laughs> so like, no. And I also was in, in Toastmasters and can totally relate because, and I just wrote an article about this because I interviewed the Toastmasters people for um, the weekly, like months ago, maybe six months ago. I can't remember, but I they used to be that person that was like, don't call on me. I'm just here to listen to the talks. <laughs> I'm on stage. Oh. So oh, yeah. no, I know that was the worst part, but you know what? Then I got my I love I, I got my ribbon for oh, winning the wow. table topic. And I'm like, wow, this was huge for me. You know what? Somebody that yeah, I'm an introvert and I and I'm an extrovert also. It depends. And when I'm in my cave to go out, it's not easy. But then when I go out, I chime. But it's like, I need to remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I learned about the word ambivert years ago. And it just, re it just kind of like astrology and, and other modalities. Like when you learn about these things, it just releases so much pressure, right? Because you're like, oh, I, I'm normal. So ambivert is when you really want to be home, but you can go out and shine, but then you just want to come back home. <laughs> so, so that's me. <laughs> yeah. I know. And lately, actually, I've been talking with a couple of people today. I talk with a couple of people and they've been feeling, they don't, I, it's like, I, I had a networking event last night and I'm like, I didn't feel, I didn't go. And then it's like, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm being very introspective, creating. I definitely, I mean, that's why I'm teaching crochet. I'm giving a class soon and October. Yeah, I'm giving a class October 8th and uh, on crochet. And and, and that I, I love to do. Mm. I've, been, I've been doing it. And, and you know what is to teach people about, it's not about the perfect flower. They're going to make a flower. Or a, it's about not comparing yourself. <coughs> And one of my, the biggest lesson, I think I, I wrote that, I put it on, on, on video today. The, my biggest lesson is if I cannot see beauty in what, in me, in what I create, I can, I mean, I cannot see it in others and it has to do with my value, how I'm valuing myself. Oh. It's crazy. It's, I created things, I don't know, maybe five years ago that back then I'm like, oh, this is horrible. And now I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful. Why I wasn't able to see the beauty in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an amazing perspective because I dare say probably everyone has some type of journey like that, right? You know, even when I look back at pictures of myself as a child, I always thought I was overweight. And now I look back and I'm like, why did I ever have that perception in my head? Right. So yeah, we, we judge things and then years later go, Oh, it actually was beautiful. So yeah, that's really, really insightful. That's why I love talking to you. You have so many really great insights. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Tell me about, you know, yes, you're, you're doing the crochet and for this podcast will be passed by the time that class. So anyone watching, please sign up for her email list. So you are in the loop on these classes that she does, because she does a lot of classes they are really cool. And I wish we lived closer because, um, yeah, somewhere like you did the astrology one. Like, how do you think of these classes? Do they just come to you? Or are they based on um, different things that you've learned over the years? They're very unique. I love it. They come to me, and actually, I am developing a pro. I'm developing a project on doing like an unwinding and creating monthly event, mm -hmm. and it will be with all these different ideas. I'm going to be teaching at Miami Day College. Yep. I'm super excited, optimizing That's your professional huge. image, optimizing your professional image. They just asked me if I if I I'm I'm working on syllabus for to teach macrame, embroidery, crochet. Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh, you're gonna be like a, a teacher teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know what? And it took me years to realize I'm like, I'm not doing something. I mean, I'm doing I'm not doing something so different. Because I educated doctors in medicines, Plavix, I launched Plavix, Avapro, Avapro, hypertension, heart attacks. And then prior to that, I worked for Parbel, which was a division of L'Oreal. And that was educating. I traveled in the Caribbean, Mexico, sometimes South America and South America. And I would educate the beauty advisors on our products, which was Ralph Lauren, Paloma Picasso, Elena Rubinstein. 
So all along, uh, that's what I do. I educate. So, I mean, it's not so far from what I have done all my life. Yeah. So you just married the education with your passion for fashion, let's say. Finally, finally. You know, Melinda, yeah, I remember frustrated for many years like what is it that I like to do what is it that I'm good at I read so many books and nothing it's like for me that finding wasn't easy at all mm-hmm. it's like I mean I, I can show you books and I journal I journal every day not every day but I have a lot of journal books that I have written and it's like always it's like it, it wasn't easy to find and maybe it was in my face but I was scared I didn't want to see it and somebody, you know, it's like we teach what we need to learn ourselves. And I talk about the image because it has been a process about in a, in the process for me to learn about my own image and that, that I have and and how that holds me back, mm-hmm. how that that hold me in the past. Hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, and I really hope just listening to you inspires other women or even men out there that are looking to change up their career or their business, because we are in a place of change. And Mm -hmm. um, if you're thinking it's going to be such a hard pivot, like Astrid saying, it might really not be right. It's taking what you love and taking another aspect and maybe even putting them together. So that's very cool. Thank you. It's very cool. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to share? I definitely want you to share anything you want because I think you're so fascinating. So, and I'm so appreciative that you're on this podcast. Thank you. And you know what? Yes, I want to talk right, briefly. I know that we're running. Yeah, know, we're good. I, I don't time, so you're good. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I want to say I was reading the, this book of Paulina Poriskova, No Filter. And one of the things that she talks about is the war against invisibility and versus the war for self-acceptance and the reason that I mean I was it's been in my mind I need to say and I'm going to do a video what she and I'm going to do a video about it and it's important because there's so many things that are being done because we feel invisible we don't feel seen because we have to look certain way I mean there's so much education and so much of creating awareness on the image that we have of ourselves and you know what before social media came our family conditioning Yes. So it's so yes, yeah, social media shows us something, but before that, we were born somewhere. And that's those are those are the things that we need to look at. And as an image consultant, strategies, whatever name you want to call me, I have that into consideration when I work with clients because it's like it's not what I want, it's not it's I can help you, I teach you, I teach you and educate. And it's, it's what works for you. And it drives me crazy. It's like, do this, how to, and you know what? When somebody does that, they're not seeing the person. And going back to feeling invisible, you know what? You would think we now we connect with so many, but we are really not connecting. We're really not connecting. And that's, it's, it's I think it's like, we need to decide, okay, so which battle are we going to fight? Is it, uh, is it, with, what, which war are we going to fight? Is it, against invisibility and then what does that mean to you if you decide like I mean surgeries and all these things because you're not satisfied or the war for self-acceptance to work on yourself and accept you know what I'm getting old we're getting old we all everybody's gonna get old and it's are we gonna suffer I see suffering Melinda that's what I'm saying and I wanted I mean you wanted yeah. and yes, I wanted to mention this because I see suffering and mm-hmm. In autopilot, suffering and not conscious about it. Mm -hmm. We can go a whole other podcast on this topic because (laughs) number one, I saw Paulina and I said this too briefly before I hit record because I was like, we got to hit record. (laughs) Um, I saw Paulina speak last November about her book at the Coral Gables Women's um, Business Lunch. She came as a speaker. She was here for the Miami Book Fair. So it was amazing to hear her speak. I'm a Gen Xer. I grew up watching her on the runway. I used to live in New York and work for Sex with Avenue and go to runway shows. So this is all um, like, I get it. What I find fascinating though, that I think is really important and what you're saying is to be yourself. And I actually wrote, wrote a blog on this years ago. Because 
when I was in my 20s and 30s, I actually felt like people were trying to make me feel bad for dressing up. I love dressing up. I also love not dressing up, which is fun part of living in the Keys. Like I always say that I could not shower for five days and be the best looking person at the post office, right? But it's just a different environment. But I love dressing up. It's fun going to Miami. For me, it's fun. Like I love dressing up for the podcast. Like I love it. So what happens sometimes is because we've swung so far with, you know, this, this conversation. And if someone's trying to look like the Kardashians or whatever, right. Um, then that makes, it's kind of like, it tries to make other women feel bad if they do like to dress up and put on a pretty dress. Right. So we just really have to own like our emotional state and how we feel and, and be good with that. And so I think that's what she's also trying to get across in the book. Of you know, so yeah, if you don't want to wear makeup, don't wear makeup. If you don't want to color your hair, don't color your hair. Like it's cool. Like if at the end of the day, and I know you're extremely spiritual, like we've lived thousands of lives. We're just here in these meat suits. So I just make the best of it because that's what I like to do. So if we all really just got to that place, then I think that that would just eliminate so much. How do we get to that place? I don't know. Just having these awareness and discussions is, you know, obviously step one. So I really appreciate you bringing this up because it was definitely something I had to work on a lot when I was in my thirties. Now I'm 52. So, um, because, and that was even before social media, you know, so I've had to really work on that. And then someone I, I know indirectly is a plastic surgeon in Boca and he had to hire a psychiatrist to oh. put everyone through a screening prior mm -hmm. to getting plastic surgery. And I am not against plastic surgery at all. So I am someone who like, if you want to get your, your nose fixed, cause it's going to make you feel better, like freaking do it. Right. But that's my point is how extreme it's gotten to what you're saying. And how, you know, here's a plastic surgeon who's been in business for a very long time and he had to hire a, a therapist to put yeah. everyone through a screening process to make sure that, you know, they're in sound mind as they're making these decisions because it's gotten like kind of out of hand. So yeah, yeah, all very valid points. And hopefully anyone listening to this, like this just creates awareness around, you know, as Esther said, you know, are you operating on autopilot? You know, what's your, what's your emotional state around how you're, you're showing up and, you know, feeling good about it. So. And you know what you just said, it's not about judging about plastic surgery. It's what is going on with you that you need to do this and that it's, and it's, it's like everything else, because it, it's today is this, then tomorrow is that because you are not taking care of the root of what is going on with you right. probably you don't feel seen let's say I mean I don't know I don't want to I don't want to I mean things that I see and in conversations and this is all real it's yeah you're totally right and it's not about judging it's about what is it that you even when you dress if you want to show your everything it's like it's okay but why is it that you had that need because that has consequences mm -hmm. like, for example I mentioned the other day like this 12 year old having big boobs having a surgery to to increase her boobs oh wow and he's like you know what it's not about is does she know i mean what when a man approaches her and treats her like a woman a 12 year old don't doesn't know how to deal with that and and honestly i just think god that's going to be painful when you go running <laughs> Um, that too, that too. finding a bathing suit and a bra it's like I don't even care I, know. I don't even yeah. I, I guess I'm just an old married person like I don't think about that I think more of like the practical like oh, that's gonna hurt <laughs> so. but I'm glad that that doctor that you know is it's so I mean he's sending they should have done that always he hired he hired someone she's full-time so Good. the therapist is actually like full time on the staff now. So not mm -hmm. even just like, I, you know, I'm referring you out. No, no, no. Like this person is like part of the team now because of the, um, 
the element of people just going for more and more and more and more and not just, you know, just getting the nose job because it's always bothered them and they now have the financial means to do that. It's just become so, so much bigger. So yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And someone and, you who know, hates my nose, I have like a rubber ball for a nose and I have, you know, teeth issues. My list is crazy. And I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. I'll just put on some earrings. I like my earrings. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And you know what? When you wear the right colors for you, and again, it's not the right colors based on season, it's based on season and based on where you come from too. It's, I mean, your, your myths that you're carrying and you're repeating and it shows you your cause. And when you do the things that, like the things that, when you wear the things that make you feel, not make you feel, you feel spectacular, then maybe you don't need all those, these other things. Mm -hmm. Like the colors that make your eyes shine and, and or the colors that make your skin look spectacular. Then right. you don't need all these different things. And then maybe the clothes, like I, I talk a lot about proportions, maybe just moving this and changing a little bit, just change the whole outfit. Does this little changes? And maybe you don't need to do all these other things. And, and not that I'm against it. It's like, why is it that you need to do this or that? That's just create awareness. Yeah, awareness. You, you said the word that you said it exactly. Just have awareness around what you're doing, why you're doing it. And um, yeah, it's it's good. It's good stuff, girl. Good stuff. Yes. So mm -hmm. how can people connect with you? Obviously, I'll put things in the show notes, but I would like you to share as well. So I am on Instagram on the Astrid Dos Sayas. I have a website called Estilo Imago that has a meaning on its own. And then on LinkedIn is on the Astrid Sayas. And uh, Facebook also Estilo Imago. Perfect. I love it. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And also too, she has an email list. So when you connect with her, um, cause that's, I think personally, one of the best things I think in terms of keeping in touch with how people, uh, what classes and things they're, they're doing. So, yeah. So awesome. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. This was lovely. I learned so much. Awesome. Thanks everyone. <laughs>